I get a lot of people who come and visit me and they bring all their equipment and then they show me this is what I bought. It's time for me to use this. Can you please show me how to use it? Because I have added on and added on and added on and bought so much equipment, but the pictures still don't work. So with all this experience that I had, I have come to realize that many people really come with just too much equipment that the equipment now becomes the handicap instead of the help. They have so much gear that when the picture is too bright, they don't know exactly where the problem lies anymore. They have so much gear that when it's a small nudie branch in front of them in a little hole, their camera cannot get in anymore. They have so many pieces of equipment hanging on their camera that when it's a very simple thing to do, they find it very complicated. So I have come to realize that this is really a very, very big problem when taking pictures. Equipment too much is worse than equipment too little. This, I believe, is really a big problem. So, with today's talk, I thought maybe we should go through the steps that you should have or you should follow when you are thinking of going into underwater photography and the things you should know of. The first question is, I need a camera. What camera should you buy? The TG, very simple. But this camera has no manual mode. You need to know how to use the camera. You need to know what restrictions to set on the camera. But you cannot fully control the camera. And this is the TG, no manual mode. You got the compact camera, which allows you all the controls of a massive camera. Only thing that's different is no interchangeable lens. You cannot choose to use a macro, a wide angle or fisheye. You can zoom in, zoom out and the camera is with one lens. Then you move to the micro four third, which is generally from Olympus. Very, very good cameras, interchangeable lens, smaller setup. And I will tell you what is the difference between the micro four third after these slides, yeah? Then you have an APS-C sensor. And finally, you have the full frame camera. This, again, is the sensor. Okay, my drawings, I always have my drawings on my show. If I were to ask you to help me to paint my house, and I only gave you five buckets of paint, you would paint my house and it will be red and nice. So I said, John, you did such a good job. I'm going to give you the same five buckets of paint. And I need you to help me to paint my car. Now John says, five buckets of paint for your car is too much. I said, it's okay. Finish the paint. So John does one layer of paint. He does a second layer of paint. And he does a third layer of paint. And he does finish the five buckets of paint. And my car is beautifully red. Very, very rich red. Then I said, John, fantastic job. My final job for you now is to paint my castle. But I will also give you the same five buckets of paint. And John will say, you're out of your mind. How can I paint your castle with five buckets of paint? And I said, don't worry about the quality. Just make it happen. So John will add five buckets of red paint. He adds 100 buckets of plain water and he dilutes the paint. And then he paints my castle. So from afar, my castle looks nice and red. But when you inspect it closely, it's a very poor red finish. Now, what are these three pictures about? This is your sensor. And this is your megapixel. So you have sensor and you have megapixel. The most important thing is the sensor. That is the paint. 
I have a Xiaomi mobile phone that has a 108 megapixel. But the sensor, the pain is very little. This is my Xiaomi. This is how much pain I have. This is the Olympus TG6 sensor. This is how much pain you have. This is the RX100 G7X sensor. This is how much pain you have. This is the Olympus Pen EM1 EPL. This uh, Panasonic. This is the sensor of a micro forte. This is how much pain you have. APS-C and full frame. Why is it in the year 2000, they can use a 10 megapixel camera and print a billboard the size of a 10-story building? Because they are still using full frame on a 10 megapixel. They have enough paint that when you stretch out this picture, the quality finish is still fantastic. After you have chosen your camera, you need to choose a housing. I went to Backscatter because they are a very good reference point to see the housings available. If you want to buy a TG and you only dive two trips in a year, Olympus housing, very good, affordable, trustworthy, ergonomically very good. What is ergonomics? Ergonomics is ease of use, the user friendliness. The, Panas the Olympus housing, ergonomically very good and very affordable if you intend to do 12 trips for diving a year with your olympus go for the nauticam ergonomically good long lasting and very very good housing i mean olympus on one end nauticam on one end you choose whether you want to go for the budget or the good one. If you want to go with a one-in sensor like the RX100 or the G7X, Sony has their own housing, very, very affordable. And of course, you've got the Nauticam, which is a very premium price. Again, ergonomics. It's hard to beat Nauticam today in ergonomic sense. Every camera maker have their own thought behind their housings. Some want to be bulletproof, some want to be lightweight, some want to be ergonomics. So you cannot say which is better and which is not better. Some are built to last, some are built for comfort, some are built for all kinds of different reasons. I'll explain later. Now you have decided <clears throat> to go and buy yourself the best one because Tim said sensor the most important, I better buy a full frame. Then I went to Sony and I asked Sony which is the best full frame. They say flagship model. What is flagship model? Flagship model means the best that Canon has. They said this is my flagship. What is the Sony flagship? They said this is the best one I have built. That's their flagship. Which is Nikon flagship? Z9. Their flagship today. Everybody has got their flagship. And then under that, they have performance series and everybody series. So you decided to go for the A1 because this is Sony's flagship. Full frame sensor. And now you want to choose a housing. Housing, there are many types. I've chosen a few examples for you here. Let me give you very quickly a run through. Yeah? Seacam. They take a camera and they said this camera is so heavy. Now we need to calculate how much air we need to put in the housing to lift the camera. So they calculate it and now the camera in the housing is neutral. Then they ask you which lens you want to use. Oh, I want to use 105 mm. Okay, they weigh the 105 mm. Then the port, they say how much air we need to put inside to make the lens neutral. So you put it on. This is neutral. Huh? In the water, you drop there, it's neutral. Then the arm. The arm, how heavy? Okay, how come all the C-cam arm is round one? Because in the middle, got air. They have enough air to lift the arm. Then the stroke is so big. Why so big? They have calculated how much air needs to be inside there to lift the, the stroke. So if you use a complete C-cam setup, you put it in the water, it's neutral. That is their engineering. Nauticam ideology behind building their housing is different. They are ergonomics. When they decided to build the Nauticam housing, they said, when I put my eye in the viewfinder, 
and I have found the new D branch already. I don't want to lift my head up to change settings. I need this six finger to be able to change aperture, shutter speed, ISO, zoom in, focus, and so forth. Six fingers. So they build their housing based on this idea, holding the camera, six fingers, don't need to lift your head up, you can shoot. So sometimes you press the button on the right, it's actually in the front on the left one. Sometimes you press the button on the left, it's actually behind on the right. They build the camera for you, the user. Ergonomics is most important. Lightweight, they say no problem. Put float. So everybody has got their own ideology behind building a housing. Now, my advice to you buying the housing is buy the one that the dealer is your best friend. You buy from somebody that you can pick up the phone and say, I have a problem, I need spare part now. I know people buy the Ecolite. Why you buy Ecolite? Because near my house, I can go and service. This is a very good reason. So choosing the housing, price range all over the place, choose the one that is most convenient to you. This in the long run will help you a lot. You've chosen your housing. You've chosen what you need. Now, do you need floats? This is something you need to write down. I also need float. How heavy is it in the water? Don't go to the shop and say, I want to buy float. They will sell you float, all kinds of float. You go in the water, it's like a balloon like that. Or you go in the water, it's like, wow, still so heavy. Borrow, borrow. Borrow from your friend, borrow from the shop. Go out and try. When you find that perfect combination, then you buy. But you buy after knowing that this is perfect for my setup. Okay. You bought your full frame camera. Essentially, there are three kinds of lenses you can buy. Wide angle. When you look at the picture, the line is straight. Fish eye. When you look at the photo, the line is bent. Macro. For you to shoot things from very close distance. Only three lenses. When you want to go into underwater photography, they tell you all kinds of lenses actually Wide angle, fish eye, macro. Choose which one you want. Fish eye works very well underwater because fish eye allows you to focus very close. If this is the barrel sponge or this is the fan, using a fish eye, I can focus from here and still get this and still get the background. Why is this important? Because my stroke can just fire softly and get it. If I use wide angle, I need to be here to get the same picture. My stroke needs to fire so hard to get there and a lot of backscatter because my stroke is so powerful. So wide angle, normally very nice if you're shooting natural light, lah, if you ask me. Using fish eye, you can come near. But why would you not use a fish eye? Because if you're shooting manta ray, using fish eye, the picture is so big, the mental is so small. So this is the time that you use a wide angle. Of course, at least you can get in there a bit further, uh, closer. Okay? Essentially, these are the three lenses. There's a fish eye, there's a wide angle, and there's a macro lens. When you say, I want a macro lens, you need to buy a pot for the macro pot. When you say you want fish eye, you can just buy the dome. Then you say, I want to also use wide angle. Okay, then you need an extension for the dome. So these are things you need to consider when you are taking the steps. Alright? Let's talk about lenses. Plenty of options for lenses. This is the Sony 1635. And this is also a Sony 1635. 1635 worth 1000 over Sing dollars. And 1635 worth almost up around 3000 Sing dollars. Sony and Sony, what's the difference? The more expensive lens, generally better in low light. Generally sharper. Viewfinders, straight viewfinders, normally for shooting wide angle. And 45 degree viewfinders, normally when you're shooting nudie branch, you need to put the camera on the floor. Then if you want to look into the viewfinder, your face is already on the sand. 
So you use a 45 so you can see from the top. Or nowadays they have LCD. You can buy an LCD, especially for the 50 year old one who really, really eyesight is dying. Buy an LCD, put it up here, plug it into the housing, into the HDMI of the camera, and you can take picture like looking TV already. This one, for my age, this is my choice. Strokes. <clears throat> you need to buy strokes. Simple stroke until very high-end stroke. Simple stroke, when you look at stroke, go for guide number. It's called GN or guide number. The bigger the guide number, the further the light can throw. So a small guide number, no problem for macro. But if you want to shoot wide angle and throw your light far, go for 33, 32, a big guide number. How do you connect the strobe to the camera? Two options. Sync cord, that means the strobe is connected to a wire. The wire goes to the housing and inside the housing, you put it into the camera. The camera is connected to the strobe by a wire. This is a sync cord or fiber optic. That means you're inside the camera housing, the flash has to fire, the cable will sense and send it to the stroke and the stroke will follow. This is actually a more secure system because it's sealed. You can't leak anywhere inside. Light shapers are snoots from a flash. Channel the light down so that you have a spotlight. This is the Marilux one that actually has a battery. And then you can narrow down the spotlight from big to small. So you can actually have spotlight effect on your Nidu branch and get very black backgrounds. This is Marilux. It fits onto any stroke. The backscatter has their own. The retro one. The scuba lamp one that is built for their own and uh, its adapters. And you have the Marilux one that actually has a built-in target light. Then you have constant light snoots which are torch lights. Now the downside to having a torch light snoot is the shrimp and the duty branch and the pygmy seahorse don't like the light. So when you're trying to snoot with the torch light, always running away. If you use a snoot that is with a stroke, when he fire, the shrimp says, what was that? Oh, no more. Then boom, again, what was that? So they don't really move. But if you use a torch light, the fella is constantly trying to get out of your light. Focus light. Some people say, I want to buy a very powerful focus light, 10,000 lumen one God. God. But the focus light is not supposed to be a part of the photo. So much power for what? You turn down your stroke, you turn down your stroke, until almost zero, you stay, your picture still too bright. Of course, light, your focus light is so powerful. So focus light is not supposed to be a part of the photo. Have a decent photo focus light that is easy going so that the critter is also not always trying to run away from you. Something there just to help the camera to focus doesn't need to have a lot of power. Diopters, borrow before buying. Try before you buy because diopters are very, very variable depending on what camera and what lens you are actually using before adding the diopter. So your friend may say, I'm using this one, ah, it's a plus 23, very good. It may not work for your camera. So try to borrow and find that perfect diopter for you before you buy one. Wide conversion lenses are for compact cameras because you cannot change to a fish eye or wide angle. So you buy a wide conversion lens to add in front of your compact camera or your TG. It will make it wider. You need money. And you will need money, 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 money until you finally stop taking underwater photography. So I think i wrap it up with that one. It's a very quick run through. I think I have covered the entire spectrum of what you need to do. And if you have any questions, you come to me because they already want to throw me off the stage. Okay?
Thank you for coming.